thank you for your presentation. I like it very much. Um, I was thinking about the, the current uh, Cri energy crisis on prices, like uh, at least uh, I come from Brazil and we are having uh, this problem with uh, droughts that are causing a problem because the, our whole system is based on uh, uh, hydrology, or hydrology energy. Yes, yes, yes. And um, I, I was thinking this is a problem of technology of adaptation of climate change. Uh, I'm not uh, asking for the case of Brazil, but uh, we, are, we are seeing soaring prices in the whole world of, uh, in energy prices. And this is a problem of technology. It's a problem of supply chain. What's happening? Like, uh, I don't know if you, it's, okay. you can answer this. But well, um, I'm not economist at all. You have seen that. Mm -hmm. uh, well, what I want to say, what I can say that uh, talking of uh, fossil energy, uh, today fossil energy are not uh, expensive, they are not cheap, they are really, really cheap. And you may say, well, no, it is not. Please consider the physics. Imagine that you have to buy something, for example, sorry you have to buy um, a table, okay? And you have to, to take it at 20 kilometer. Well, and it's a huge table, 40 kilogram. Well, imagine that you've got a car, you go with your car, you put the table and you come back, 20, 20, 40. Well, in terms of gasoline and the use of the car, it will cost you five euro. Then imagine there's a guy with a bicycle, okay? and with something uh, close to the bicycle and you tell him, well, I have to take this table, please go 20 and 20 by bicycle, you put the table and you come back and I will give you five euro. <laughs> you see that it's absolutely, absolutely uh, nonsense. Then the consequence is that, okay, fossil energy is really, really, really cheap. That's the first part of my answer. So for me, it's not a problem of technology, except today with the low price of the fossil energy, the problem is that the capex for uh, the this kind of company is very low, so they have to do very, very uh, huge amount of uh, exploration, and this will cost a lot, and it's not sure that we will have any, uh, sufficiently, sufficient cash to do that. That's another problem. But for me, the problem is not a problem of amount of energy, we do have that. Um, it's much more a problem of uh, regulation and political decisions. And for example, in France, it's strange, but for the PV, the, the legislation has changed a lot, so everybody is lost. And I just read uh, two, years ago, two days ago that uh, you, people today, for uh, different, uh, different towns, they put together and they say, okay, we will do a PV farm, okay, and it will cost us 10, 20 million, so what, but we can, we can do that and we see that we can receive some, uh, some amount of money for the local, uh, the local parts and from also the state, okay, and today it's not possible to put these two and then these projects are, are, are now stopped. This is something important to consider with the energy that every, every solution of energy has its uh, equivalent in terms of um, area. PV and wind power is something that should be considered for area of lo local areas, okay? It's absolutely nonsense to say, well, in France, we have to choose for PV instead of nuclear. This is not the term of the, dis of the discussion. Nuclear power is so dense that when you want to co when when you consider one uh, one uh, nuclear plant, that it's this has to be considered at the scale of the of the country, of course. So these are different things. So it's very difficult to answer to your question. Yeah, sorry. Um. Thank you for your, your, your talk. It, um, there was one, one question I was wondering about whether you have any 
any data or any more insights on like the energy use it like in some like the social metabolism kind of direction the energy use of, of humans in for instance in Paris and like comparing this and looking at the the links the disembeddedness you were referring to earlier oh, sorry the end the of the, uh, the, of the, the question the, yeah it's a you um, mean the, you, you mean the, the working point of our society in terms of energy yes I think so well, I mean, the, yeah what I can show you here is something that we did in research on animals. Just give me a few seconds. I think it's not so far. Well, here you've got a horse, and we studied a horse walking, trotting, and galloping, okay? And this is the consumption of oxygen. And the consumption of oxygen is a measurement of the flux of waste. It's not what you heat, it's just what you release, okay? So it's important to consider this. And here we take this divided by the velocity, we get this curve. This is the amount of energy which is lost, okay, rejected, okay, for a given process. Now imagine that you have to work for one kilometer. And you can ask yourself, okay, I can walk with my usual velocity, I can walk fast, or I can walk very slowly. Why do I choose this velocity? And the answer for us and for the horse is the same, because we ask the horse, okay? And if you leave the horse walking or trotting or galloping free to choose, okay, his velocity, then it choose every time this minimum. That means that for doing one kilometer, the velocity it choose, and you too when you work, is the velocity where you produce at the end of the protocol the less amount of waste. And this, for, this is also thermodynamics, for sure. Okay? And this is really important also for our society. Say, well, where is the working point of our society? Very fast, maximum production, Okay, maximal efficiency, no, minimal production of waste. And this is what we learn from biology. And I think this can be transferred into our society. Is this an answer to your question? It goes, it goes in that direction, thank you. Okay. Hi, thank you so much for the presentation. Uh, I have two questions, actually, uh, about technology. One regards the limits. Uh, um, you were showing us that the time you, it takes to charge a battery or to fulfill yeah. the system yeah. is also important for the uh, yeah. energy it dissipates. And uh, that reminds me of the problem uh, there is with wind and solar power plants, yeah. that there is a problem with storage. Yeah. Uh, I would like to hear from you if that's like something that's going to, um, how do you say, interrupt the development of these technologies as replacing fossil fuels and so. And also, uh, I wanted to ask you about the, um, the rate and the pace of this evolution of technology. If we think uh, we can have efficiency gains, or if re renewables replacing um, is something that we, we can actually imagine for a um, uh, medium-term future, or if we should lower energy levels, energy consumption levels, as rapid and as much as we can. Okay. So, if I put into the, the second part is consideration of innovation versus low tech, for example, well, briefly, and the first part is about the storage of electricity. Uh, first, I have to say that probably you know that hydrogen is not a source of energy, it's just a vector. It's a way of, um, transport, of, uh, of transportation of the energy. hydrogen okay and you have to look to uh, the overall process and at the end you've get the complete efficiency 
well, it can work, but uh, the efficiency is not uh, not so good. Well, concerning the st the electricity storage, <coughs> um, the point is more uh, problematic because the density of energy you can have in a in a battery can be proved by maybe 10, who knows, 20 percent, but not a factor 10. That's not possible. And some people may say, well, you say that today, but maybe tomorrow. Okay, give me a few seconds. When you take one centimeter square of matter, whatever is the matter, copper, zinc, whatever, okay, then you've got 10 to the 22 um, atoms. So it's a huge amount of atom. Imagine that you've got, this is uh, a material where you can get one electron per centimeter square, per centimeter cube, okay. Then you do the calculation of, okay, if I have a battery of one liter, what is the capacity of this battery? And you will get capacity which are close to what we, get, what we do have today. So if you imagine that we make build batteries with a capacity multiplied by 10, if you look to the process, that means that you should be able to have mat material where you could get 10, 10 electrons instead of one. And this is not possible, okay? So from a technology point of view, our batteries will be improved by a few percent or more, but not uh, an order of magnitude, okay? And then, does that mean that we should not consider um, electricity, so elect electrical solution? Of course, we should. But the question is, for, for example, for uh, the transport. If we just consider, okay, today we have our cars with uh, gasoline, and tomorrow we will have the same amount of cars, uh, but with electricity. This is clear, cl this clearly does not work, clearly. You have to multiply the number of nuclear plants in France by a factor of three, I think, at least, okay? And then imagine that, of course, when you are at the station, you don't wait one hour to uh, follow your trip, so you are at the station and you change the battery from your which is empty with one which is full. But you can imagine that the station has a huge amount of battery and this is completely, completely uh, foolish to consider that. So today, well, for electricity we don't have the, 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 the correct solution for that. And we have to face with this problem. Okay. For the, for the rest, for the innovation, okay. There are some technologies that we can imagine uh, to be more simple and with the substitution of material. Maybe we've, we did that with some plastics and uh, changed the, 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 um, the composition of the plastic and used different plastic. Okay, why not, why not? This is sometimes possible. But this is also sometimes not possible. For example, electronics, okay, the electronics will never be a low-tech, never, never. Why? Because in such a device, there is two billions of transistors, and the size of the transistor is a few nanometers. You know the price of a new plant of uh, semiconductors? Because today uh, the, po uh, the politics says, well, we have to bring back the industry of semiconductors in Europe. Okay, welcome. The order of magnitude of the price for a semiconductor plant is 10 billions of dollars. It's not a small, a, small, a small thing, okay? Well, so there are technologies that will never be low tech, never. And then today I think there's a place for a discussion and with my colleague of social science, that's something I, I'm claiming, uh, well, there are many authors, uh, Simondon, uh, Illich, and others that have written nice things about the technology and also uh, conviviality and, and different things like that, saying that, well, the technology should be something that everyone could consider and, and everyone could understand and so on. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but even though I would use all, my, all the rest of my life if you don't do physics, you cannot understand how this works. I'm sorry, 
but that's the point. So that means that I think there's a room, there's plenty of rooms to think about technology in a social science way, okay? Today there's discussion about low-tech. Well, low-tech is, is a French word, in fact. We, we call it low-tech in French saying that, well, these are technology that use few materials, and uh, okay, you've got, uh, you can recycle and, and cool. So by lo um, below, inside, beyond the term low-tech, we consider many, many, many nice things, but it's absolutely not uh, evident, okay? And what is important is to say, okay, let's be serious with the technologies. There are technologies where probably we may reduce this kind of technology and use low-tech solution, okay? In some places, there's no way. In other places, we should use this technology. For example, a fraction of the use of digital solution for uh, agriculture, maybe that can be a solution sometime, okay? It, but we have to be around the table and discuss that. And today, it's not the case, not the case. But it all sounds so tentative. It sounds like so experimenting. And we have this pressure of climate change, of reducing emissions, and we need to lower it. Yeah, you are, you are perfectly right. You know, the point for me, when, when I participate to, the, to this book, uh, the, the manual, uh, there are, it's built in four in the six doors okay one is about the earth uh, ethic question uh, and so and so and there's one door which is logos logos is the question of the story and i think the most important thing that we have to do is not the question of technology because the technologies we do have the, the question is to build together the common story if we do that 